I built my first camping and sleeping conversion for our new hybrid Sienna about a year ago. And it served us well on a number of camping and long distance travel trips. My videos about this conversion gain strong interest and I'm grateful for your views, subscriptions and comments. In my Sienna camping update a couple of months ago, I talked about potentially building a new version of my camping and sleeping conversion to incorporate the enhancements we've come up with in the last few months. Well, the time has come, and in this video I will show you my new camping rig for our 2021 Toyota Sienna hybrid minivan. Hello and welcome to Telvia. In my first camping conversion build, I focused on a compact, foldable design that permits sleeping in the van with two seat configurations. Let me quickly talk about the reasons for designing and building this next version of my camping conversion. First, we found in our travels and camping that we prefer to travel relatively light and that at most sleeping, comfort and ergonomics are more important to us than a foldable design or extra cargo storage. In my previous videos, I talked about the importance of headroom when sitting on the bed. We chose a 6-inch thick mattress, which is very comfortable, but its thickness reduces our headroom when sitting on the bed. We wanted to keep this mattress, but get little extra headroom in my next build. The foldable bed assembly also reduces the available height of the bed platform. So in my next build, I decided to eliminate the folding element and find an alternative solution for carrying gear and luggage. As with my first camping conversion design, my objective was to avoid drilling any holes in the sheet metal of the van to fully preserve the option to restore the van to factory condition for resale when the time comes. I considered designing my new rig using a 3D CAD software, but realized that to get precise internal dimensions of the van interior, I would need to use a laser scanner, which I don't have. Also, I realized that by designing my rig on a computer, it would be difficult to account for human ergonomics and other practical considerations that are hard to anticipate when looking at the computer screen. With this in mind, I spent a bit of time sitting inside the empty van with a measuring tape while visualizing various design options. From my experience building the first rig last year, I knew that the seat mounting brackets for the third row seats that protruding from the floor are excellent mounting and anchoring points. Designing easy access to our water jug and refrigerator, which are stored in the third row well in my first build, was the second very important objective for this next build. Our refrigerator requires high vertical clearance when opening the lid. This means that if we wanted to have more ergonomic access to the fridge, we needed to install a slider for the refrigerator and to mount it just above the lower edge of the door seal. Third, while I decided not to make next rig foldable, I wanted to be able to quickly and easily remove the rig for the rare occasions when we need to reinstall rear seats for added passenger capacity or when I need extra cargo space to carry bulky items from a lumber yard or a box store. Here is the design choice I came up with. I decided to do this build from extruded aluminum parts, also known as 8020 extruded aluminum. Extruded aluminum parts are light, strong, and versatile for building highly customizable structures. I've never done a project using 8020 extruded aluminum and had to learn a lot about it before embarking on this project. Thank you to other automotive builders for sharing their experience working with extruded aluminum parts. I found many of YouTube videos I watched to be informative and helpful. To avoid machining extruded aluminum parts, I ordered parts and fittings cut and machined to my specifications from T-Nuts company. I was lucky to get most of my measurements right first time, so that nearly all of the ordered parts fit as I expected. I did have to cut two small aluminum parts for a better fit, however, and we'll talk about it later in this video. This new design consists of two unconnected structures, the bedding platform and the rear support structure. Let's talk about the design and build for the, each of these structures. 
The primary reason for building the bedding platform in the new hybrid Sienna minivan is to offset its sloping floor and to provide support over the bumps of non-removable second row seat mounts. The width of the narrowest part of the van is 48 inches, which defines the width of the bedding platform. I did consider a design that is 6 to 4 inches wider towards the front of the platform, but decided that it is not needed for our 52-inch wide sleeping cushions. I ordered the cross elements of the platform with machined pockets for anchor fasteners. Connecting extruded aluminum parts with anchor fasteners made assembly fast, precise, and strong. In the front, the bedding structure is supported by two legs also connected to the platform with anchor fasteners. To be able to fine-tune the bed height and to protect the floor from the rough edges of the cut aluminum, I installed plastic feet with an M8 profile bolt. They are screwed into the M8 threaded center channel of the extruded aluminum legs. By mistake, I ordered the aluminum legs about 4 inches too long and decided to cut them myself rather than wait for reordered parts to arrive. Cutting aluminum is a very messy operation. Even with a powerful shop vacuum, the flakes of aluminum fly everywhere when cutting with a power tool. I had to cut the aluminum parts twice, first with a hand saw and second with a circular saw. I found that while cutting by hand was slower, it was much less messy. Both cuts required fine-tuning with a hand file. For one or two occasional cuts, this may be okay, but I would not recommend cutting extruded aluminum without specialized equipment, like a high-end miter saw with a high teeth count blade or a professional milling tool. I assembled the bedding platform on the floor of my garage and was able to place it inside and remove it again from the van through sliding doors. It is mounted to the three protruding mounting brackets used for the third row seats with a one and a half inch velcro strap. The diameter of the seat mounting brackets allows for a partial insertion into the channel of the extruded aluminum of the rear bedding cross element. Once extruded aluminum is bound to the three mounds, the structure is securely fixed to the floor of the van. You may ask, how strong and secure is a Velcro strap? And can we rely on its strength for this application? Well, I decided to test its strengths for myself. To simulate load on the strap and the overlapping interlocking Velcro part, I made a loop over my pull-up bar from this Velcro tape with a 5-inch overlap between the interlocking surfaces. Using a short PVC pipe, I applied the full weight of my body, approximately 175 pounds, on this loop. The Velcro loop was strong enough to support my weight without breaking or unwrapping. With three wraps of a seat mounts, I believe my bedding platform is secure enough to be held in place even in a potential accident. Wrapping and unwrapping the Velcro allows for a quick installation and removal of this platform into and out of the van within minutes. Another benefit of the Velcro attachment is that I'm able to partially raise the bedding platform for transporting and for securing the heavy or bulky items underneath the platform. The weight of the fully assembled platform is 48 pounds. I used the strongest standard Series 15 aluminum extrusion for this build, which is probably an overkill for this application. This platform could be built lighter with a light or ultralight versions of 8020 extrusions. Since I used anchor mounts, the distance between cross elements is adjustable if needed. I set the spacing between cross elements of the platform to optimally support mattress cushions. Okay, let's talk about the rear equipment structure. The main purpose of this structure is to provide mounting support for the ice core refrigerator slider and the sliding water jug shelf. 
I found that the luggage strap brackets in the lower back panel of the van are attached to the sheet metal of the van with M6 bolts and they can be removed. This gave me an idea to use these mounting points for attaching an 8020 extruded aluminum element across the rear panel in the third drawer well. Next I needed to figure out how to build and secure a structure for supporting the sliders for the refrigerator and water. After tinkering with very standard parts and brackets available for the 8020 aluminum extrusions, I found that these 90 degree brackets allow for some adjustability in height. The dimensions and height adjustability of these brackets gave me the option to mount four front to rear 8020 aluminum elements to the rear element bolted to the frame of the van in the rear wall of the seat well and to another aluminum bar that can be attached to the four protruding third row seat mounts on the floor over the rear axle area. And as you guessed it, I used an industrial velcro tape to attach the cross element to the seat mounts. Once all the connections were tightened, the structure is rock solid and secure. We use a Jackery 1500 watt hour backup battery underneath the refrigerator to provide power to the refrigerator. And I was lucky that it happened to perfectly fit under the fridge slider. To further secure the Jackery in place, I used my favorite Velcro strap material once again. The charging cable from the Jackery to the 110 volt plug of the van's AC inverter is neatly hidden now in one of the channels of the 8020 crossbar. The AC inverter allows us to charge the Jackery and run the refrigerator at the same time while we are driving. After four to five hours of driving, the Jackery is usually topped up to 100%, which is sufficient to keep our fridge at 36 degrees Fahrenheit inside for three days. We don't usually camp for longer than three days without driving our van somewhere, so no need for solar panels for our adventures. The optional slider for our ice core refrigerator is very well built and it allows us to extend the fridge out of the van by almost two feet. This provides sufficient clearance to fully open the fridge cover without needing to support it. On the right side of the van we have a heavy duty sliding tray originally designed for kitchen cabinets. We bring with us a five gallon water jug that serves us our drinking and cooking water for three days. The last part of our camping conversion build is this floor leveling panel in the third row seat well. I will talk in a minute about why I had to make the floor leveled in the van third row seat well. But first, let me show you how I've done it. As you can see, there are four bolt studs protruding from the frame of the van that are used for mounting the third row seats. The lower bolts are at the right height to support a panel that levels the floor in the well. Remember, Early, I had to cut aluminum legs of the bedding platform. The cutout center channel was factory threaded by T-nuts for M8 bolts. These seat mounting studs happened to be an M8 bolt profile. So I decided to use small sections of pre-threaded extruded aluminum parts and screwed them onto the seat studs. This provided a way to bolt a floor panel to the 8020 sections I just installed in order to prevent any potential rattling of the floor panel when driving on rough roads. So great, what is this leveled floor section for? Well, we have all experienced discomfort of needing to use a toilet when none is available. During the two years of pandemic, many public restaurants were closed and this problem became even more acute when traveling. Maybe one of the reasons RVs become so popular in recent years is because they all have a toilet. After some research about portable toilets, I found a simple, hygienic and convenient solution for our van. Many boat owners have been using 5-gallon utility buckets as makeshift portable toilets for decades. With a snap-on toilet seat for better comfort, these buckets are the right height for most people. 
disposable plastic garbage bags and moisture absorbing powders allow for the proper disposal of deposited matter as solid waste in regular garbage. By adding a couple of tablespoons of moisture absorbing powder to the clean bag, it's ready to use when needed and the solidified waste can be disposed at the next stop. When camping, being able to relieve yourself at night without dressing up and wandering around in an unfamiliar area in the middle of the night in search of a restroom is also a huge comfort factor. A five gallon bucket with a disposable bag and a bit of chemical powder is a great way to achieve such comfort. The bucket, however, needs to be placed on a sturdy leveled surface for sitting on it. That's the reason for this black half an inch HDPE panel. I hope I have not offended you with this discussion about simple human physiology need. All of us have to deal with it one way or another, and we'll see how well this solution works for us. We're getting ready for our first camping trip next week with this new rig. In the next video, I will show you what gear and luggage we bring with us, and how and where we carry it and store it when driving and at night, and how this new rig works for us in actual camping. So please subscribe not to miss the next episodes about this new Sienna rig. Let me know your thoughts and questions in comments and smash that like button for this video. I look forward to telling you more. See you soon. Cheers.